It was a Wednesday morning. I had just gotten my tater tots with the rest of my campers, and we were trying to decide what we would wear for the luau-themed dinner that night. That's when a director pulled me aside and said my dad was on the phone. I was on an island with no cell phone service, so this was really surprising. The moment I heard my dad's voice, I knew. I knew my life was about to change forever. And what do you do? What do you do when you know your life is about to change forever? My life did change forever. Two days after that phone call, my mom passed away. And now, seven months and nine days later, I'm here in front of you talking about grief and how we handle it in ourselves and in those we love. I think of the golden rule, treat those how you want to be treated. How would you want to be treated if your mom died? You probably have no idea. I had no idea. I had no idea how we were supposed to act, what we were supposed to do. Everyone around me was at a loss for words, and they covered it with flowers and I'm sorry's, cards and you're so brave, stay strong. I'm so sorry you're dealing with this. Stay strong, as if I needed a reminder that I wasn't strong, and as if I needed them to tell me that I wasn't trying my hardest already. It was weird. They said I was brave. Hadn't, I wasn't brave, I hadn't done anything. But the weirdest part was then everyone just disappeared. They said their peace, and then they left. This village of support that my mom had built to help us when we were scared and confused had all left because they were scared and confused. I was reading this book of people who had also lost their mothers, and someone said, I felt like I was a lost puppy, and they would look at me and say, I'm so sorry for what you're going through. And it was my job then to comfort them and tell them that I was okay. Reading that made me realize that it's not just me who felt this pity. It's everyone who's ever lost a loved one has to deal with comments like these. People say, oh, they don't know, they don't realize. Well, if they don't know, then let's teach them. On the day my mom died, my grandmother looked at me and my brother and said, it's okay, we'll get over this. And as much as I love my grandmother, I really wanted to yell at my grandmother because you don't get over it. I wish there was some grand finale. I wish I could wake up and say, all right, everyone, that whole grieving my mom thing, we're done with that, so did that for a few months, we're good now, we can move on, all good. But it doesn't work like that. My sophomore year, there was a kid in my class who lost his dad, and he said something to my friend, and she looked at me and said, I get his dad died, but does he have to be so grumpy all the time? And I wish I had known then how inaccurate that was. I'm not saying that grief gives you an excuse to be mean or rude, but we need to let people grieve the way they need to grieve. Grief doesn't have an expiration date. It's a wave that rides up and down every day. I feel empowered by my grief. I feel empowered knowing that while I'm up here on the stage, my mom's looking down on me and going, yep, that's my girl. But it doesn't mean I don't have bad days. We live in a society that's go, go, go. Why are you slowing down? Do that faster. Catch up. Don't be too sad. Or I won't want to hang out with you. But there's times I want someone to look at me and say, do you need a hug? Do you want to stop and talk? Because yes, sometimes I do want a hug. And I miss my mom. That doesn't make me damaged or the sad girl whose mom died makes me human. Empathy is about being there for other people. I think a lot of people feel they don't know how to empathize with me because they haven't been through what I'm going through. But empathy is realizing someone's in a painful situation and instead of pitying them and feeling sorry for them, supporting them, helping them, committing to them. I think more than anything, I just wanted someone to ask me how I was doing and actually mean it. People ask you how they are in a crowded and busy way. 
people will look at you and go, how are you? And there's not really a right answer. I can't say, I'm good. Some people go, really? You're good? But I couldn't say, no, actually, I can't sleep most nights and I cry in the middle of the day. It just felt like there was no right answer. When people hear that your mom died of cancer, they feel this need to tell you about a friend of a friend or a distant relative that had cancer. And it took everything in me not to scream, yes, but that's not your mom. Because it doesn't compare. You can't empathize with someone by trying to compare your situation with theirs. You empathize with someone by seeing this person is scared and alone and you realize there's been a time when you felt scared and alone. I think more than anything, I just wanted people. A few weeks ago, I was with my youth and government in a friendship circle and we were going around, people were talking about hard things they had been through from attempted suicides to losing a friend to losing a parent like me. And my immediate reaction wasn't to dismiss them. These people were unapologetically opening themselves up to me. They weren't trying to compare themselves to me. They were just telling me about a time when they felt scared and alone. And even amongst all these broken stories, I felt whole for the first time in a while because it wasn't me that was dark and twisty. We were all dark and twisty. Everyone is. Whenever something extremely hard happens to you, people think you just want time to deal with it because no one else can understand. But really, you just want people. You want to feel like you're still a part of something. One thing I've noticed is that everyone who's lost a parent that I meet gives the best hugs. Because <laughs> that's the thing we wanted the most. Hugs. So, hug each other. Be there for each other. Instead of saying, I'm so sorry you're dealing with this, say, thanks for telling me. I'm here for you. Because people heal through people. There's a quote that says, you can't fix me, but you can hold my hand while I fix myself. Thank you.